specialists for attending today's session. Uh, my name is Amina Shadi, and I am the Alumni and Digital Media Manager for Youth Solutions. Um, so today's session is part three, takeoff. Um, so the event will be recorded and available on our website for anyone that wasn't able to make it. Um, and this event will be led by our extremely talented Kathleen Wolf, who is the founder and CEO of the Purpose Partners, and will help you carry, um, help you on your journey towards developing your own personal brand. Um, so today, using the information from part one and part two of the event series, you'll learn how to identify what content to post on social media um, and how to create content ideas. And so we will be doing three prize drawings at the end of today's session, um, and you must be present to win. So make sure you have your cameras on to show if you're wearing a branded shirt to be entered into our first drawing to win JMG swag. So I got my JMG swag right here. Uh, your camera must be on to be eligible to win. Um, and then also all youth that are registered and attending will also have the chance to win a $25 Amazon gift card. Uh, and then just a reminder that any youth that registered, attended, and participated in all three of the parts of the series will be entered into a drawing to win a Chromebook. So that will be our final drawing of the event today. Um, and then before we get started, I'll just turn it over to Cheryl Miller, who is our JMG specialist for Networks Northwest. Um, who will be leading a fun icebreaker activity to put your knowledge of brands to the test. Take it away, Cheryl. Good afternoon, everyone. It's so good to see you here and um, participating in this event. These events have been awesome. And I just want to thank Kathleen for putting together the content. And Amina, you're doing a great job coordinating all of this. So... <clears throat> So like Amina said, I'm Cheryl Miller and I am a Jobs for Michigan graduate specialist up in Cadillac, Michigan. Um, so I have, so I work with middle schoolers and I like to have fun. So I have the, the pleasure of conducting a fun and interactive activity that will show how effective brand. Pleasure of switching this over to Kathleen for the actual meat and potatoes of the of this um, event. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what you've got for us, Kathleen. Okay, I'm going to share my screen. And then, can you all see? Today we're gonna to talk about LinkedIn content that builds your brand. Yep. Well, the other thing I, I noticed recently is um, we started this series with building your personal brand and the latest Harvard Business Review talks about build your personal brand, how to communicate your value to the world. So I just want to let you know that what we started is very important and people are taking notice. So you already have a, a jump on others out there. So I really hope that uh, this time that you're spending has been valuable and that you put the content to use. Today we're going to be talking about building content to help support your, your personal brand. But before I get to that, I want to do um, a, a quick review. So in these series, those of you who have been here, I see a couple of familiar faces. Thank you. You probably are aware of this. But those of you who haven't joined us before, what we've talked about in these series is, you know, brands really help you distinguish a product, service, or concept from its competition. And from that Kahoot, you guys know brands. And, and, and when you can recognize a brand, that adds value. So wanna make sure you also know that you are also a brand. So how you project yourself in, in front of others is how you are branding yourself. Make sure that you are telling the story that you want. And, and we've talked about how to tell a a brand story that helps you stand out from the rest. And finally, you know, we've been applying the personal branding to LinkedIn and, and it works for other social media, but, but specifically we've been focused on LinkedIn and building a, a LinkedIn profile will help you really create relationships with people who can connect you to opportunities. And that's what this is all about. So today, by the end of this session, you will understand the benefits of interacting with others on LinkedIn. I want to make sure that you feel like you have learned how to create content that helps you build your brand. And then ultimately, we're going to walk you through some prompts that'll help you build content that you can publish 
on LinkedIn because that will help you build your brand. So before we get going though, I, I wanna ask a little bit about your LinkedIn post. So in the chat, if you could say, which stage are you at? Are you A, I haven't created a post yet, B, I just follow others, C, I have posted but not very often or consistently, or D, I'm adding a lot of content and building relationships regularly. So if you can, in the, in the chat, let me know which stage you're at. For some reason, I'm not seeing the chat. So if somebody who sees it can help me. A pretty good mix. Yeah. There's um, a couple B's, A's, and C's. Okay. All right. Great. And so what we are hoping today is through this content, if you haven't created your LinkedIn profile, um, Amina has resources from the last event that can, can certainly help you create that. If you're just following others, my goal for you is that you'll feel comfortable uh, creating content, but following others is good. And so my other advice is if you follow others, engage with their content because that will also help build relationships. And C, if you've posted and not very often or not consistently, my goal for you is that you'll feel more confident after today's session creating content that you can post. But always, you know, you want to do a mix of following others, engaging with their content, and then producing content that helps establish your brand too. So let's get down to it. Um, you know, there are, oops, sorry, just a quick reminder. There are 75 million businesses on LinkedIn and over 900 million people. So if you want to create relationships that will help you uh, in your education and career, LinkedIn is the place to do it. You can get to know about companies. You can get to know about individuals in a company. That's why it's important for you to be on LinkedIn. But I remember a while ago, my personal mentor, she always lived by this. She said, relationships are everything. And I think that you'll find that throughout your future, relationships will either help you, you know, learn something new, relationships will help you get the job that you want, and building relationships with other people, you know, through business will really help you succeed in the future. So make sure that you have a focus on building relationships. Building relationships can happen in a number of ways. You know, they can happen one-on-one -on -one in person. They can happen through Zoom meetings like this. Um, you know, I'm getting to know, you know, Myrna, I know that you've been um, working in the school store. So you and I have never met, but based on the relationship that we've built through built th through these sessions, I know that you've participated in DECA. And so I know a little bit more about you. And so these are great opportunities to build relationships. But then also you can build relationships on LinkedIn with people that you may or may not know, but you'd like to know, or you'd like to know more about their job, um, their role. And, and what I found is that people on LinkedIn are very, uh, they're very open to, to sharing with others. And so to build relationships on LinkedIn, you want to build content that is engaging. And, and why it's important for you to build content is that gives other people an idea of what you stand for, what you're interested in. So there's five tips that we're going to cover today for creating engaging content. The first is know your audience and engage. The second is to use visuals. The third is to create a strong headline and use storytelling, tell stories. Um, the fourth is be authentic. And the fifth is provide value. One of my biggest pet peeves on LinkedIn is when somebody connects with me and they try to sell me something right away. 
Don't be that person. Uh, you know, connect with somebody. Show that you're interested. Ask them questions so that you can learn about them. Or give them, you know, hey, I see you post about this topic a lot. I know this about that topic, so I think you might be interested. That's a way of providing value. But let's dig into these tips um, a little bit deeper. The first one is know your audience. First of all, who are you trying to connect with? So, um, you know, if you're interested in marketing, you can search for people who have jobs in the fields of marketing. If you're interested in, um, in being a chef, look for people in the, in the restaurant industry. You can search for those types of uh, people using the search function of LinkedIn. And then look at what they post. So find out what they're interested in and then figure out what you're interested in and where there's an over overlap when you see that, that is an opportunity for you to connect and build relationships. Just like you would if you, you know, went into somebody's classroom and you saw a picture of, uh, you know, a product or see them wearing a logoed shirt. That's your opportunity to ask someone a question and start to build a relationship. On LinkedIn, figure out who you're trying to connect with, understand where your interests intersect with theirs, and then start a conversation either on their posts or through messages. It's really simple. The number two tip is use visuals because when you're posting, there are people who will post, um, you know, longer text posts. And what we found is that those type of posts don't get that, um, at that much engagement. When you're using visuals like these here, the one on the left happened to be from Western Michigan University that they posted yesterday about some of their graduation activities. And then the one on the right with the dog is actually a company called River Ridge. And uh, they're an apple grower in Michigan. And, um, but I thought what was interesting between the two is that Western Michigan down in the, the bottom, they have a picture of a dog and River Ridge, even though it's an apple growing company, what they talked about is that apples can be uh, good nutrition for a dog. And between, you know, from an advertising perspective, babies and animals usually uh, attract attention. And I thought it was interesting that both of these organizations had them in their posts yesterday. So use visuals that are appealing. And, um, and I'll create this in uh, follow-up tips and tricks, but there is um, a free service called Canva. And Canva is really easy to use to create your own visuals too. So um, when you're trying to attract attention on your LinkedIn post, Get creative and use visuals that support the story that you're trying to tell. The third tip is grab them with a headline. And so this happens to be a business-focused headline from a company called Consulting Success. And, uh, but, but I thought it was a, a great example because what they did is their headline is from $10,000 consulting projects to $60,000 per project with fewer hours worked. So what they did is they knew their target audience. Their target audience wants to make more money in less time. So that's a great headline that captures their attention. I think the other thing that they did well in this LinkedIn post is they also put a picture of a person. You know, whenever you can humanize your content, that's a good thing. And then they have their logo there. You know, you as an individual, you might not have a logo, but you might have colors that you use regularly. You know, when we talked about branding, you might, you might create your own logo. So something that would help you stand out. So think about those opportunities. But for this, grab your, the, the people that you are trying to attract with a catchy headline. Any questions on that? All right. Well, the next tip is be authentic. And um, 
I happen to be on, on spring break and I don't normally work while I'm on spring break, but I thought it was a great opportunity for me to espouse some of the, the values that I talk about in my, in my company. Um, it wasn't a pre-planned post, so I put that out there. I was a little um, you know, vulnerable. There wasn't a lot of thought behind the post. And so I, I said that right away. And I talked about me traveling and I put a post of a picture of the beach that I was at. And, you know, and I put why I was posting it. I put it because I thought, you know, if you're not taking vacation, then you should. And, and I'm seeing a lot of the people that I interact with on LinkedIn talking about this badge of honor that they work all the time. Well, you know, they're gonna get burned out. And then, um, you know, the, the second reason that I put this is that I think it's really important that that people spend time taking care of themselves. So this was just a post that I thought was very important for me to, to encourage others to take vacation. And then the last thing I want to po point out on this post is down towards the end, I, I asked a question, how will you rejuvenate? And the reason why I ask questions at the end of my post is that I want to encourage people to interact with the post and, and leave comments. So that's just one trick on how you can be, you know, show something about yourself, be authentic, but also, you know, use questions to uh, encourage people to participate in your posts. The last one is, is provide value. And you know, provide value, it, it doesn't have to be something that takes a lot of time or costs money, but when you figure out what people who follow you or if you have a special talent that others might recognize or appreciate, provide that on LinkedIn. And so a lot of people who follow me are, are women who are interested in building their careers. And, and, and what I found when I was building my relationships with these women is that oftentimes they, they lack confidence. So I created a little resource based on my um, research to help them figure out what they're really good at and then get the confidence that they need to be successful in their work. So I created this little workbook and I put a post out there offering it out there for free. So that was my way of providing value to the people who follow me. But I encourage you to think about what are your unique talents? What do you know that somebody might be interested in? I mean, Tristan, you said earlier that you know a lot about Legos. You recognize that logo. And so, you know, if there is a way that you used Legos to um, accomplish something, or maybe you built something that you're proud of, that's a that's an interesting way to stand out. Take a picture of that. Show that on, on, on LinkedIn. Or, you know, if somebody has a problem finishing a, a Lego project that you might have completed, you could offer a tip on, hey, here's how I, how I approach Legos. And, and, and that could be some value that somebody else would appreciate. So figure out what you uniquely can bring to somebody else and offer that up because people will notice and they will appreciate it. So those are five quick tips. And really now though, what we wanna do is spend a little time creating content. And before we get into creating content, you know. Things that, that you might consider in building content for your LinkedIn is share something that inspires you. Answer a common question that you get asked or ask a question, create a poll. You know, if you're interested, I create polls uh, often, like if there's something that I wanna know and I'm interested in hearing, it's a great way to engage the people that follow you. Predict the future. Um, who knows? And there's no wrong answers when you're trying to predict the future because nobody knows. But if you believe that, you know, I'm going to I'm going to be 
the I'm going to I'm going to play and I'm going to play professional pickleball. And here's why. That might be a prediction that I make. And, and uh, you know, that starts a conversation on my LinkedIn. But make a prediction that, that means something to you. Or you could create a top five or a top 10 list like I've shown over to the right of this page. Um, you know, this, this person, uh, you know, is ending their, their first 10 years at a startup. And so that's what they've learned. You might share some of the things that you've learned in the JMG program. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to break you up into groups. And I want you to talk in your groups about what a post might look like that would tell others about your experience with the JMG program. And if you could, write that out because afterwards, uh, we'd love for you to share that, and then Amina and Kelsey will use that on their on the Youth Solutions social media. Who wants to share a post that post idea that they had that came out in the the breakout rooms? We're not open yet. Um, I can share uh, on behalf of, um, my, I know um, one of the post ideas we had, we didn't come up with like an actual post yet, but we came up with some ideas for it. So some like content ideas. So Tristan was in my group and he attended all three parts of the series. Um, and before the event going into it, he wasn't super familiar with social media or LinkedIn. Um, so he wanted to gain some experience in that. And now from attending all three sessions, you know, he has uh, some ideas on like how to build his profile, what kind of content to share um, and things like that. So I thought that would be a really cool post to kind of, you know, show why, why you wanted to attend the events at first and then what you learned from it. Um, and then you can start building his profile that way. Yes, that's great. I think, you know, sharing those tips that you learned with other people, that's how you add value to others. So that's great. Yes. Absolutely. Um, and Ayana was also in our group. Um, and she's a new YAC member, and she actually um, volunteered to help at the CDC while she was also um, participating in the C CDC, which is really awesome. And she attended our alumni event the night before. Um, so we have some really great pictures of her at the CDC um, and with some peers and competing. Um, so we talked about how that would be a great thing to share on her personal page and tag us so that we can repost it. Um, and then in, in our group, she um, also brought up a question, like, is it okay to post after an event? And we said, absolutely. You know, it's like, sometimes when you're in the event, it's, you know, it's, you just want to enjoy the moment. And then after you've had some time to reflect on it, sometimes that's when you get the greatest post, because you can really reflect on your experience, share some great pictures, um, things like that. So we're definitely I, encouraging. I agree. And, and really, ideally, you would post before the event saying, hey, I'm gonna be here. And then post during the event, maybe a picture of the event and then post after, here's what I learned. So, you know, for, for me, I think, you know, there there's one event that can get you three really rich content ideas. So, yes. Great, does anybody else wanna share? Well, I know, um, you know, in our group, um, Manny talked about, oh, Manny, do you want to talk about the post that, that you, you thought might be helpful? Um, yeah, for the post that I thinking of, or like an idea for the post was to, for me specifically, like, I was inspired by the people within my program when I was in school, and now I continue to be inspired by everyone, but specifically, one thing is I got to speak to my old JMG class, and since I've left, it has shrunk, but I went and did a presentation, and after my presentation, it has grown, and they were actually able to attend the CDC, and they got number one on their marketing video, and I continue to be inspired by them being able to conquer being smaller 
program and getting things done like that. Yeah, I, I think that's an excellent post. And there's probably a few posts within there. So excellent. Well, thanks for sharing. And then um, two, what I would encourage you to do is when you do post, and if you post anything about uh, JMG, tag JMG, tag Youth Solutions, so then your post gets inserted into their feed too. And so you get greater exposure for the content that you create. I will follow up and, and get some additional tips and tricks to Amina that she can send out as a, as a follow-up after this session. But I really appreciate everyone attending and, and their engagement. Are there any questions before I turn this over to Manny? Okay, thank you. But you can always reach out to me, connect with me on LinkedIn, ask me questions. I'm happy to answer. So thank you for your time. Manny, do you want to take it over? Oh, yeah. So thank you, Kathleen, for leading an uh, incredibly informative event. And after attending the three-part series, I hope you all feel enabled, energized, and confident to can you continue your personal brand journey. So before we move on to the prize drawings, I'd like to take a moment to introduce myself and talk about some things that I've been able to do within the JMG Alumni Network. So my name is Manny Mesh. I am JMG alumnus from Wendover High School. I graduated in 2020 and I've continued on with the Youth Advisory Council. And I have been a part of the JMG Alumni Network since it launched in 2021. And I've had the opportunity to stay connected within Youth Solutions and JMG and participate in some amazing activities through the Alumni Network. Some of the things I've been able to do within that is I've been a panelist on Coffee with a Purpose that was on like mental health and things like that. And that was a great event. And I volunteered at the last year's Career Development Conference. And with, um, and then another one is I got to attend the National Student Leadership Academy in Washington, D.C. And that trip was an amazing trip for growth, networking, and just everything about it was great. <laughs> and I've been able to connect with alumni from across the state within this program because I've been able to be connected with Youth Advisory Council and all these events. I've been able to keep in contact with all of these alumni. And I've gained so much leadership experience from everything that we've done, like speaking and doing these events and events like this, things like that. <laughs> I'm sure there's some more, but I'm going to move on. <laughs> there's a few reason, few main reasons that I love being part of the alumni network. I would like to invite any alumni in this year's graduating seniors and attendants today to join our alumni network so you can stay connected with the JMG beyond graduation. Simply join our JMG alumni Facebook group to unlock networking opportunities and participate in fun and rewarding activities like this. Plus, if you join by June 9th, you will be entered into a drawing to win a $50 gift card. Get out your phones and scan the QR code on the screen. Now I'd like to turn this over to, um, I'm sorry, I don't know how to say her name, Anya, to discuss another way to stay connected. So hi everyone, um, you were super close, it's Ayana, no worries. Ayana. Some people have troubles with mm -hmm. it. Um, so thank you, Mani. And I also wanted to bring up another way to stay connected and involved with Youth Solutions, which is through the Youth Advisory Council, aka YAC. Um, so the YAC is a group of emerging leaders. Um, we are passionate about Jobs for Michigan's graduates programming, and we also want to help carry out the purpose of inspiring and also connecting the youth um, to achieve their future beyond imagination. So becoming a member of the YAC 
um, means being a leader, also being a supporter, and as well as an advocate for um, the JMG program and all the fellow students um, across the state of Michigan. So I wanna share a little something more personal. So since the time I have been involved with YAC, which is actually pretty recent, I have been able to connect with many encouraging people. And then I also got the chance to volunteer. And I also get the opportunity to just um, give some input and on some ideas. So we um, just invite you all to join us with that. And then if you have any questions about the YAC, you can um, also reach out to Kelsey, who is on the Zoom meeting with us. Okay, and now we have the JMG graduation celebration for 2023. Um, we invite you all to register for this. This um, is on behalf of the YAC, so we plan it, and it features guests, speakers, fun prizes, and some more stuff. So this year, um, the event is actually going to be held virtually through Zoom, and it is occurring on Thursday, May 18th from 12 to 1. And if you register and attend, you can also get the chance to win some swag. So don't miss out on that. Um, additionally, I wanted to mention our theme. So we came up with a theme called New Horizons, Embracing the Next Chapter, which pretty much just celebrates the idea that Graduating means the beginning of a new journey, but also it encourages encourages sorry the um, new graduates to embrace their upcoming um, successful future. So now let me turn it back over to Amina to wrap up today's event. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you to Manny and Ayana for sharing your experiences in the Alumni Network and the YAC. We are so grateful to have you both so involved and, and committed to JMG and New Solutions. So thank you so much for being here and, and your involvement in general. Um, so we would love to get your feedback. So if you have your phones out, if you want to just scan the QR code, we'd love to hear about um, what you liked about this event any suggestions on future events, things like that. So I'll just give you a second to get your phone out and scan the QR code. Um, this post-event survey will also be sent out um, via email as well with their resources. So that'll be sent out early next week. All right, Kelsey, you can go ahead. Awesome. Um, and please be sure to follow us on social media as well. So while your phones are still out, if you want to follow our, um, follow us on social media using these QR codes, that would be great. We'd love to see all of the new posts that you'll be doing. Um, thanks to all of Kathleen's wonderful tips. So I'll also go ahead and put the links into the chat as well for you. Um, and with that, we've come to the end of our part three and our part three series. So I just want to thank you all so much for coming and thank you to Kathleen, Cheryl, and Dominique who couldn't be here today who helped plan and put on this amazing series. We hope you all enjoyed it as much as we did and we look forward to seeing seeing you all go through your personal brand journey and we hope that you'll tag us so we can share your wonderful posts on our page. Thanks so much everybody.